Hey guys, Tang with Fox Airsoft here, and today's video is going to be about high kappa style pistols. Now, before we start, if you're looking for a pistol to start out with, be sure to check out our beginner section on foxairsoft.com for pistol starter kits. They'll offer you a complete solution that gives you a pistol, holster, and all the stuff you need to get started with running a sidearm. All right, so let's talk about high kappa pistols. So the original name, the high kappa, comes from a Tokyo Marui design. Tokyo Marui is the originator of all airsoft. So a lot of designs that we see today that we use very commonly are actually stemming from an original Marui model. The high cap itself is based on a high cap 1911 style frame or 2011 frame. In the real world, it's a competition pistol, but in airsoft, it's basically for all intents and purposes, a wide body 1911 style gun with a fat magazine, a lot of aftermarket options. And that's uh, what a lot of people primarily run these pistols for is because they like the ability to customize them. So what I have here today is uh, gonna be the lineup from Jag Arms and Echo One. So I have here the Jag Arms DMX and then also the Echo One Tap or Tactical Assault Pistol. Basically they share the same design. What you'll notice is the cosmetic differences. So to start out, these are full metal guns with the exception of the grip module. Uh, what you have here is a polymer grip. Each will offer their own kind of unique texturing depending on the model you end up with. Then on the metal frame, you have a Picatinny rail and the slide is gonna be unique to each model as well. You'll have various color combinations so you get to choose your own style and all of them will perform just about the same. So the main thing about the guns are that they are green gas and they use high kappa style magazines. These hold 31 rounds out of the box and they hold a lot of green gas. On a full fill, you should expect about two full magazines worth of shooting before you have to fill it again. So if you know from our previous videos, green gas has the benefit of you can always top it off. So let's say you play around and you only fire a couple shots out of your high kappa, you can always top off the green gas, unlike CO2, which you have to sacrifice the cartridge or wait till it's completely empty before you change that out. Now with green gas pistols, of course, the caveat to that is very sensitive to temperature. You have to use them in warmer climates. If it's too cold, like freezing cold, your gun will probably perform very poorly. So I recommend using this in the warmer climates or if you're playing indoor exclusively where a lot of times the climate is controlled. So for the GMX models, you have the cut slide, which reduces the overall weight. That makes the gun recoil very quick and snappy, which is something that a lot of people who run high kappas prefer compared to other pistols. You also have an adjustable rear sight that's blacked out and serrated and a green fiber optic front. The slide itself has front cocking serration so you can grip it at the front to manipulate your pistol. Unique about this model is the non-tilting barrel which makes the gun very reliable no matter how you fire it. On top of that, it also has spiral flutes built into it so it looks very cool. The frame here is Picatinny like I said and the rail section of course, or the lower frame is metal, so you can interface that with a laser or a, some other accessory such as a flashlight, which is a very popular run in TQB. The safety is ambidextrous, and of course in a high kappa style gun, you get all the benefits of a 1911, so one of the things about the 1911s that people rave about is how light the trigger is. This being a single action, you just have to rack it the first time to be able to fire. When you pull the trigger, the round will get shot and then the slide will cycle back and cock the hammer again. The gun cannot fire with the hammer down. And also, uh, you cannot engage the safety unless the hammer is back. So you can only do that cocked and locked, as they say. The magazine release button is located on the left side, so it's uh, right-handed friendly. Sorry, lefties. And it's also an extended design, so it's easier to reach. Around the trigger area, you have a double undercut, so it's easier and more comfortable for you to grip. You can get a really good high grip on the gun and it's very easy to control. Then you have a mag well here that's usually an add-on when you build out your high kappa style pistol from scratch. Uh, this basically gives you a funnel that allows you to reload a lot easier compared to a traditional mag well where it's pretty, uh, pretty small and narrow and you have to be very precise in how you place it. Also, if you notice in the bottom of the frame here, there's a QR code. If you scan that, that'll take you directly to the manufacturer's manual for the gun. All right, for the Echo One Tap version of the pistol, uh, pretty much the same internals and guts. Uses the same magazine, just a different base plate, so you can interchange them and it won't uh, affect the function. The whole concept behind the Tap pistol is 
it is a shorter version but with a integral compensator built in so it looks very cool what you have here with the shorter slide is it's going to cycle quicker um, some people prefer that in uh, running pistols for speedy type players because uh, they want it to be able to cycle fast and do rapid follow-up shots the tap has a shorter sight radius because the integral fiber optic front sight is pushed back a little bit and then you have a low mount type rear sight that's not adjustable red fiber optics very high contrast so i like it a lot you can pick up your sights very easily when it's lit outside and you can still use it in low light situations the frame on the tap has picatinny rails as well that goes all the way to the end and that's where the compensator sits the barrel on this model is also a non-tilting design so you get very little interference when the slide is moving back and forth which means the gun's less likely to jam and it's very uh, smooth in operation you get some lightning cuts in the slide and you also have front stock insertion so you can manipulate the pistol the grip section on the frame is going to be different from model to model there's different texturing combinations so you have to go on the website to see which one suits you best and from what i see here is a similar if not same type of magwell that you would get as the uh, jag high kappa here is the enlarged extended magazine release button you can also unscrew it it's tapped to reveal the traditional or shorter magazine release all right so let's uh, take one of these out to the range and we'll test that out real quick All right, so that concludes our range test. So let's uh, bring it back full circle here. Why would you want a, a high kappa style pistol like the Jag Arms GMX or the Echo One Tap? Uh, well, a lot of people just like the style. It's very cool and aggressive looking, very unique. And uh, obviously they perform very well. You also have the potential for a huge aftermarket so you can try your hand at customizing your pistols. I have to warn you though, it's not for the newbies out there. Working on pistols is pretty difficult and time consuming and costs a lot of money. So it's only if you're a true tinker and know what you're doing that you should even bother attempting this. If you're looking for something out of the box that's a high kappa style pistol, it looks very cool. I think this is a great solution because they're very inexpensive and they get the job done. The only people that might not like it either are trying to do milsim, which in this context, the pistol style doesn't really match any real loadouts out there, or you're a player with smaller hands so the grip is, of course, enlarged to accommodate a large magazine, but that makes it feel very blocky, much like a, a Glock or a USP. So pretty fat gun to hold on to. Comfortable for me because I have large hands, but uh, your miles may vary. All right, quick PSA before I go. Uh, if you're running green gas and it's approaching the warmer months, it's summer right now, uh, be sure to not leave that out in the sunlight or in a hot car when you're out in the field playing. Green gas is volatile and can explode and uh, you don't want that to happen. If you're carrying it with you, put it in the shade under your table or your staging or so on, and you should be fine. All right, guys, that does it for us today. If you like this kind of content, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. This gives us a reason to do what we do, and we enjoy bringing videos to you. My name's Tank from Fox Airsoft. I'll see you guys later.